So I have the perfect guest to break this all down. He is the host of Pocket Presence on Sleeper. He is the creator of Space Station Gaming, our friend who posted up in the Green Bay Packers quarterback room in 2021, and then of course with San Francisco a little bit later in 2022. It is time to welcome Kurt Benkert for what will be the Kurt Benkert Bowl. What do you think, Kurt? Sweet. <laughs> How are you? Hold on. Last time I talked to you, it was like four or five months ago, and you were like, it was in the dark, you're in Maui, and now you have a full-blown <laughs> studio, like glow yes. up of the year. Yeah, we're, we're back in Florida now. We were in Maui for like the first two or three months of the season, and then I realized quickly it was hard to keep up with the NFL schedule and everything. So I was like, let's just go back to Florida until the season's over and uh, get set up so we can be a little more consistent with the content. Well, I love that you're killing it. Uh, over Thank half you. a million TikTok subscribers. You're doing your thing on Madden. I want to get into all of it, your podcast, Pocket Presence. Um, I always get smarter when I talk to you, but I got to say, and, and I, I saw this coming. Like, I, I wanted you on my show <laughs> every day because you are just crush it. You analyze super well. I feel like you and I manifested this Ben Kurt Bowl. Thank you. It was it was pretty cool to see like early in the year. Nobody was really talking about Jordan. They were not too high on him. Super skeptic. And even the receivers. And you see these young guys stepping up and Jordan just like he just needed some time. And I think LaFleur needed some time to be able to trust him, give him the keys. And now here we are a week away from NFC Championship and these two teams are in it. I want to dig into these quarterbacks, but I also just want to get into like the Mrs. Frizzle magic school bus and go into the brain that is you uh, and your perspective. When you look at this matchup, what is the matchup? What is the factor, the storyline even, that sort of compels you when you're trying to figure out how this is going to go? Yeah, I think this is all going to come down to can Chase Young and Nick Bosa get pressure without the Niners needing to send five people on blitzing, like the total package. So it's what can those guys do with when they rush forward to take over this game? Because if they can't get pressure, obviously Jordan's had a really good success throwing the ball downfield when he can buy a little bit of time. But um, I don't think that if they have to bring five or six people to get pressure, the Niners are going to have success. Um, so I would say those two DNs. And then obviously I'm like a huge Aaron Jones supporter. Love the crap yeah. out of him. And but last four weeks, he's had 100 yards rushing each week and 20 carries ish. If they can get him going downhill, it's going to be a really weird and uncomfortable game. Um, and I think it's supposed to rain, like you said. So just like a weird, it's a weird game, I think, yeah. for the 49ers. And Aaron Jones didn't practice. Christian McCaffrey was back at practice. I don't know how much of that is rest or rust or what they want to do in managing these guys. But if you have mm -hmm. you know, Christian on one side, you have Aaron Jones, like time of possession becomes a thing. It all becomes very interesting with how uh, Shanahan uh, and LaFleur are going to use these weapons. Now, you mentioned Nick Bosa, so let's just dig in there. Nick Bosa. Yeah, that was wild. Uh, okay, let's, let's hear it. Let, I, I, don't know, I don't know who he's throwing shade at, if he's showing reverence, why he would show reverence. He's a smart guy. Here is Nick Bosa, and he is talking. I hope we have it. Um, here's Nick Bosa talking about the difference in planning and preparing for an Aaron Rodgers versus a Jordan Love. I think that's what he was asked. Let's take a listen. What Kyle talks about is, is the whole team has improved throughout the entire season. They've gotten a lot of guys healthy, and, and they have a lot of the same guys from the past really good teams they've had, and um, a quarterback who does exactly what he's coached to do, which... Aaron Rodgers is a Hall of Famer and unbelievable, but he kind of went outside of the realm of, of coaching. And and uh, sometimes it's it's good when you have a guy who, who does what he's coached to do. What did he say? Yeah, I think that was definitely some Rodgers shade. And I think the biggest thing is those two have had, well, the 49ers and Rodgers have had a rivalry, right? Like mm -hmm. last few years, it's been a really like dominant stretch for the 49ers. And now the way that they have to prepare for him, for Jordan, is way different. You have to get the different points in the pocket. You have to get there with a little bit different timing. He doesn't hold the ball much, as long as Rodgers would, but the crazy, crazy plays don't happen as much either. So it's very much like they're, they have to prepare a little bit more for someone like Brock Purdy, who is playing within the system than making plays when it's breaking down, where with Aaron, you kind of never knew what was going to happen, but most of the time it was something really good. Um, so I think it was a little bit of shade, but he was also saying, like, look, how we have to prepare for the Packers offense is entirely different than what we used to have to prepare for. It seems like very Shanahanian, very, like, reverential. Like, Bosa came up in this, like, scheme, 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 scheme's what yeah. matters. Brock's operating the scheme, and that's what Jordan Love's doing. It's great. But let's not pretend when Jordan Love's under pressure, like, he can he can ad lib. Yeah. He can do his thing. That's what makes him so dangerous is that he's listening and he's not doing. Um, and he can do it when it when it sort of breaks down. Who is harder to defend Postseason 2024 Jordan Love or postseason 2021 Aaron Rodgers? Ooh, um, I'm gonna say 
postseason 24 Jordan Love mainly because, well, one, if he didn't throw that incompletion on the flat route when he had to go back in the game, would have had the first perfect passer rating of all time. So that's all that we have to look at right now. Um, but I think what Jordan's been able to do is like, He's towing the line between playing within the system when he needs to, and then when they absolutely need him to make a play, he's finding a way to make the plays yeah. more often than not. And I don't – like, you cannot actually ask anyone to do any better than he did last week. So I think we have to go with Jordan there. I'm really excited to see, like, how patient he can be on this game because the Niners are going to make them earn it all the way up and down the field. They don't really give up big plays like that, not consistently anyway. So I'm excited to see what their game plan is, and I think it's going to be really heavy Aaron Jones. Who would you rather be this week, Brock Purdy or Jordan Love? Oh, man. I think the human nature of this is it's really uncomfortable when you haven't played ball in two weeks and you're the first seed and you have everything to lose. And the Packers are playing with house money. So, okay, like if they have a close game, then like that's still uncomfortable for the 49ers. If they get blown out, okay, cool. Like they probably shouldn't have been there is what the narrative will be. They have absolutely nothing to lose. And so, like, for everybody that's betting, that's why I'm, like, I'm looking at this spread, and I'm like, I don't know, man. Give me, like, a little bit of a Packers tease to, like, 14 and a half, 10 and a half, because I just think they're going to find a way to stick around and make this game uncomfortable to the end. Momentum, you you hear it all the time, it's the momentum matters. And if you're playing the yeah. hot hand, like, it is Jordan Love who looks every bit of a – all pro 12 year veteran with the mm-hmm. poise and the you know under pressure it doesn't phase him and it's sort of wild and when i look at brock you know i keep saying on the show i feel like i haven't seen brock purdy throw the ball in in seven weeks yeah. and it's really like here, here's the people are doubting brock you were in this quarterback room right when you smack one twitter hater down the purdy haters <laughs> whack-a-mole machine pops up another one okay the ravens yeah. game did not help um no. so here you know here's the truth the bad ravens loss a bounce back against the Mech Commanders, yeah. and then two weeks off. How much does it matter? I think it matters a lot. And I was I was going through this last night, like looking at who have they played, and when's the last time the Niners have won a meaningful game or a game that like gave them a little bit of a sweat? It's been over a month, right? Like probably seven weeks, almost two months. And I'm looking at it. The Packers have played playoff games essentially for the last five weeks. Like every single week, if they lost, they would not have been in the playoffs or would have been kicked out. So I just think like when the playoffs start, everything resets and the Packers could not really be playing much better. They didn't really give up points to the Cowboys until they put their backups in and really weren't like playing aggressively, trying to play safe and not get hurt. So like as far as meaningful football goes, the Packers have played a lot more really well in the recent weeks. So I don't know. I just this this game feels really weird. Like <laughs> 49ers should win. They have the better roster. They have the better, they, they have it all better, but the Packers. It's, it's wild. Cause like in my head, I was like the, the, the Niners are going to walk unless they have to face the Rams. And then I was like, Oh, and a lot of people are saying, Oh, they have to go through, you know, like the Niners have to go through two NFC North teams to waltz to the Super Bowl. That's great. Like likely we'll see what happens with Tampa, but, but it is, it is a weird like slog of a matchup. And then there's these, matchups within the matchup with these coaches and yeah. you know the Nick Bosa thing he's not only what for whatever reason or my he's not only being reverent he's he's accomplishing a couple things he's throwing some shade at Aaron, at Aaron Rodgers yeah. he's given some love to love in the system and scheme but he's also like he's kind of saying a really nice thing about LaFleur basically saying like let's praise him and what he's able to do something that people you know there's a lot of questions about LaFleur with Rodgers what was his what was what was not his the in-game decisions um what is the biggest difference as you were in both of these quarterback rooms and spent time with both teams what's the biggest difference between LaFleur and Shanahan Ooh. Um, well, there's, they're entirely different personality wise. I think their approach to the game is similar, but different. Like when I look at, when I look at Shanahan, I think he does a really good job of breaking down specifically in that game. What does he believe needs to happen for the team to win? And that changes week to week. And he does not just feature guys, just to feature guys. If he thinks it's a Debo week, his game plan is going to really like heavily cater to Debo. Mm-hmm. If he thinks that's the matchup they need to exploit. Same with McCaffrey. It's always a McCaffrey week, but you see different weeks a little bit different than others. Same with Ayuk. Like he gets more play passes some weeks than the other, just based on what the defense is giving. He like goes back to his toolbox and fixes it up. I think Lef- with LaFleur, like what I've been seeing at, in this last stretch of the year, really after their bye, he has given Jordan Love the keys at the line of scrimmage mm. to like go get into plays that are comfortable for him. And I don't think that is in the San Francisco bag right now. They don't do that. 
So like last week, Jordan had a, it was like a third and four, third and five, clock's ticking down. And he like subtly looked to the sideline and gave an Omaha signal. It's like a quick out. And he hits, I think it was Musgraves or somebody on like just the easiest completion of all time. Yeah, on Musgraves third down. out of nowhere. Yep. Yeah. And those types of things didn't exist pre bye week for them. And that is the difference. Like in a hard third down situation, he was able to get the gimme because he's fully given the keys of the offense, where I still think it runs from top down in the 49ers building from Shanahan to Purdy. Purdy's able to make plays outside of the scheme, but he's not necessarily like checking out routes and like pre-snap taking the gimmies. So I think that is something to look forward to. And I, I saw this in the, uh, in the Cowboys game, like the pick six that Dak threw, mm -hmm. it was a very similar play to what Jordan had a completion on where he audibled the out route. Like it was a terrible look for the pick six and he just called the play, read it out and threw a pick six. So I'm just like, Jordan's playing like three games within one right now, and that's dangerous. Yeah, we love it. Let's leave Dak alone. Poor Dak. Um, uh, yeah. With Shanahan, <laughs> Shanahan and um, like and the floor have such a long history together. This game, I mean, they were they were together, now they're apart, and there's like a rivalry there. They're going to be in each other's heads. Who has yeah. the advantage? <sighs> I know these are hard think, questions, but you know, I know. them both. I'm, like, I'm getting grilled but right now. But this is now, the Ben Kurt Bowl. I know. I like. I think the Packers have the advantage right now and LaFleur, mainly because they have no pressure. Like I would, if you had to ask me which position I'd rather be in right now, I'd a thousand percent rather be on the Packers side than the 49ers side with like expectations and pressure. And I think that the way that the Packers play football right now with the time of possession, I mean, last week they went requested to get the kickoff first, went down and scored seven. So the pressure was never on them. And they played or they played up pretty much the entire game. And I just think that's going to be the same approach this week. They're going to try to control the clock. And as soon as like, if the Packers can get any bit of a lead, the 49ers have to kind of ditch the game plan slightly because mm. they're not a play from behind team. And so if I'm in the floor's head, all I'm thinking is how can we jump out to a lead early and make them uncomfortable? Um, I want to ask you, I forgot how to say it, the Madden ultimate team. Yeah. If you had to pick a quarterback from, the, from not just this game, from yeah. the entire thing, who are you like, who, yeah. Which going? quarterback, like, out of anyone? You know I don't know how to ask these questions, yeah. Yeah. You're the, um, you're the Madden guy. Which quarterback, any, out of, which quarterback playing in the divisional round would you pick to head your ultimate oh, Madden team? team? Madden ultimate yeah, team? Yeah, Madden ultimate team. That's what I mean. I'm, I'm going to have to go... I'm going to have to go either Lamar or Mahomes. Those guys are, they're just, those guys are cheat codes in Madden, so um, I don't know necessarily that they're the best quarterbacks right now, but in Madden terms, you need a guy that can run. Do you think Kittle could have a big game in this thing? I do. I, think I just feel that's like a, the linebackers, Packers, I don't know if they can cover. Like, I'm like, can we find, like, could we, we have Gronk coming yeah. on in a minute. Like, this this could be, is this the Kittle game? I think it, ha that's the, that's the matchup this week. Because the DBs, where the Packers are playing lights out. The linebackers, they're good in run support, but they ne not haven't necessarily been covering the best. So I would imagine you see some design tight end strike routes and like things across the middle that he's actually the first read and not just a check down this week. So Ben Kurt, who spent time with both of these teams, even though some, so something happened with you and LaFleur along the way that I was reading yesterday, <laughs> you're picking, you're giving them all the love. They're playing reckless. They're the lost yeah. boys from Peter Pan, and they're going to go in there and upset. I think so. I just, it feels, it feels like it's part of the script. We'll see. I mean, it's hard because like Shanahan has a 28-3 blemish that no, you know, no million dollar Beverly Hills dermatologist could take off their top off of him. Like yeah. it's, a, that's a thing that I shouldn't be considering. In-game decision making? Who do I trust in in-game decision making? <sighs> Who's done it the best this season in the last like eight weeks? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm very happy. This is wild. Kurt, we appreciate yeah. you so much, guys. He does all things Madden. I don't know shit about Madden. He's the guy. Follow him if you <laughs> like it. If you like, if you want to learn about football, I, I just felt so smart because I called the Kittle as a match of the game. It makes me feel so good. Thank you. Go to yeah. listen to his podcast from that beautiful, gorgeous studio, Pocket Presence on Sleeper, and check out. This is an absolute star, a stud, and thank you for your time. And I'm so glad we don't wake you up at four in the morning. <laughs> Thanks for having me. That's See what I was worried about. Kurt Benkert, the Benkert Bowl, coming to theaters near you.